Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. In this series of videos, we're going to be showing you shock, strut, and spring replacement on various BMW and Mini models. What you see before me here is a small assortment of the product that we carry for these applications. We have the various Bilstein products, Kony products, as well as installation hardware to include spring seats, upper mounts, strut mounts, dust tubes, and compression absorbers, and the key player in this party, which is the spring compressor. We'll need this spring compressor for all of our front applications and some of the rear applications. We need to compress the spring to be able to take the upper mounts off. Everything you see here and in the video is available in our online store at bavauto.com. Now let's go ahead and get to today's video. In this video, we'll be installing shocks, struts, and springs on a BMW 3 Series E46 chassis. We'll be specifically installing the Bilstein PSS10 adjustable coilover kit. However, what you see here will be applicable to a standard shock and or spring installation on this chassis. All right, now here we are with the vehicle lifted. And again, this may very well be with a jack and jack stands. We do need the suspension hanging. We can't use ramps. We have the wheel off. And what we're going to be doing in order to remove the shock or strut housing is the pinch bolt here, the sway bar link here, and really, aside from the nuts up top securing the upper mount in, at that point the uh, strut assembly is ready to come out of the vehicle. We'll have a couple other points to take care of while we're doing this. But we'll get to those as we move along. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the sway bar link, which is coming to the strut housing right here. And we have a nut, and on the back side, we have flats on the other end of this stud that goes into the ball joint. So we'll use a thin wrench on that, anywhere from 15 to 18 millimeter. This one is 16. And this is a 16 millimeter nut. We'll get right into that. Now, I am going to use air. You can certainly do this by hand. The air just makes the job faster. <coughs> Verify which way we're going here. On the nut. And hold the flats with the wrench. <coughs> and there we go. We're disconnected there. Now, the next thing is the bolt on the pinch clamp here. Now, this pinch clamp mounts the complete shock assembly into the hub and spindle. That's the only thing holding this pinch here, is the only thing holding the strut tube to the lower section here. Now this will be common to this chassis, the E46, as well as the E39 5 series is very similar to this, a similar pinch assembly to this. E36 3 series is a similar installation, but instead of the pinch, the strut actually bolts to the back side of the spindle and hub assembly instead of this uh, pinch clamp. But otherwise, once you remove the bolts, it disconnects from the assembly and the rest of the uh, procedures are very similar. Let's go ahead and take care of this bolt. Okay, now as I noted, we're going to remove the bolt on the pinch clamp. Again, normal hand tools or we will use air on this. Make short work of it. Okay, now you noticed as the bolt came out, the pinch or the whole hub spindle actually lowered on the shock. You can see where it was up here. So this is ready to pull out. Our next stage is to loosen and remove the three nuts that secure the upper mount into the chassis. We'll show you that in just a second. Here we are under the hood at the strut tower as we call it. We have our three fastening nuts for the upper mount. We're going to remove these uh, nuts one at a time. And then we'll lower the strut assembly down through the fender well. Now as I loosen this last nut, I am going to hold up on the suspension assembly so it doesn't just fall straight down. We'll pull the nut off. and gently 
lower the assembly so that we don't shock anything. And now we'll come back underneath and physically remove the strut. All right, now we've got our upper three nuts removed and the whole strut assembly is loosed from the top. Now we'll just pull the strut tube out of the clamp. There we go. And here it comes. Notice we have locating tabs here that go into the slot in the clamp. We also have this shoulder which seats on a seat inside the bottom of the clamp. We always want to be sure that this shoulder is all the way down in the clamp against the seat. That goes for this model and especially the 5 Series E39 models. You must have that all the way down in the seat. One of our most common calls is my front end is sitting too high after I installed shocks and it's usually because this seat is not all the way down into the clamp. Here's our sway bar mount. Now additionally, in just replacing shocks, we will be reusing the spring or adding a lowering spring. The upper mount here for the spring we will reuse and the upper, spring, the upper uh, strut mount will either reuse or replace. This one I can feel a little bit of notchiness in the bearing so we're going to replace this one, uh, the upper mount. We will reuse the spring plate. You'll note there's a rubber pad here. This is between the spring and the spring plate. There's also one at the bottom. Here's the lower spring pad. We'll want to replace those so they're fresh and not compressed and hardened. Additionally, this dust boot and the rubber compression bumper will replace. When you purchase a shock installation kit, it comes with the compression bumper. You can see it there. The dust boot and both spring pads. The only other part for purchase is the upper mount. Now one other point to make, this is the driver side of the vehicle. On this particular vehicle that has bi-xenon headlights or if it has adaptive headlights, there's a link that goes from the control arm here to a box right up on the chassis here with a physical link between and an arm. We'd want to disconnect the link from the control arm and just move it out of the way before we do the removal of the strut so we don't stretch and break the link. Again, disconnect the bracket of the link from the arm, push it up out of the way before we would physically remove the strut because now we're hanging lower than we were before and it would stress the link and possibly break it. Now we're basically ready for cleanup and to do the reinstallation. Okay, now we have our new Bilstein PSS-10 assembly that we're going to be installing in this vehicle. We have it already assembled, the shock unit, adjustment collars, uh, wear pad, the spring, the dust boot, our original equipment spring plate, a new spring rubber, and a new mount. You can see this mount is quite a bit stiffer than the original one and our adjustment collar and here's that shoulder that's going to seat all the way down in the clamp. Now we'll install this just like the other one that we took out. Now note on the bench we adjusted both the left and the right side to be the same number of threads up from the bottom so when we start both sides will be at the same ride height. Once we have the vehicle on the ground roll it back and forth check the ride then we'll determine if the vehicle needs to go higher by raising these or lower by lowering. The, these two collars lock against each other. The top one is the actual adjuster. The bottom one is the lock and they just turn against each other to lock. For adjustment we loosen the lower collar, thread it out of the way, turn the top collar where we want it, hold it with the tool, turn the bottom collar up and tighten it against the top collar locking them together. For reference, you'll notice there's no alignment pins, but this one does have an L. There's a left and a right. This L will line up with the slot in the collar 
the same way the pins did that were on the original. So take note of that. And we'll just work this down into the seat. There we go. We'll assure that it's all the way into the seat by tapping on the collar a bit with a hammer. And we'll make sure that that L is lined up with the slot in the collar. Okay, now you see we've reframed here and we have the strut assembly heading up into the tower, ready for the studs to go through the holes in the top of the strut tower. We have a jack under the ball joint pushing upward to support the assembly. This is so we don't have to try and do this by hand, although you can certainly push this up by hand, uh, but a jack makes it a whole lot easier. So what we'll do is lift the assembly while a helper up top does the final lineup and starts our nut, one of the nuts into place. Okay, now we have the studs lined up. We're installing one nut on the top to keep the assembly in place. And now we can release the jack and we'll have our top mount in place for the moment. Our next job is to install the bolt on the pinch clamp. We'll turn the assembly and we'll get the bolt and start that in. Now, we'll use the anti-seize compound on the thread of the bolts so it doesn't seize into the clamp. We have seen these bolts break off due to seizing in the clamp. We certainly don't want that. So we'll just put a little bit on. We don't need a lot. And that will spread when we thread the bolt in. And I'll step around here, get our bracket into position, put the bolt through. Now, the final thing that I need to do once I start the bolt being threaded is to make sure that the shock is all the way down and seated all the way at the bottom and that L mark is lined up with the slot in the back. So just make sure of that before you do your final tightening. I can tell right now the L is not lined up. I'll come around from the rear, line the L up, make sure the shock is all the way down, then we'll tighten the bolt. Torque this to the final torque, what the Bentley manual says for value. Typically these are about 80 to 90 foot-pounds on torque for most applications. So we have the bolt tightened, our alignment mark on the back lined up. We're all the way down in the seat. We'll put our three nuts on up on top. We have one just holding the upper mount in place right now. We'll reconnect the sway bar link. If we had disconnected a headlight location um, aiming link, we would put that back on. And basically with that, we're all done here and we're ready to move on to the next side or in this case, we'll go to the rear. So we'll tighten the top nuts and this job is done.